It is so wild how many Zaini Zionists will defend the Israeli government and claim they don't kill innocent people. All the while, <clears throat> day after day, the Israeli government is killing innocent people. Like here, where the Israeli government kills a person working for the Doctors Without Borders. A person who goes everywhere and anywhere to help people in need. A true hero. Without Borders says another staffer was killed by an Israeli airstrike in Gaza. This follows UN officials warning Israel that they will stop aid operations across Gaza if Israel doesn't do a better job of protecting humanitarian workers. Meanwhile, that's one reason why the Israeli government continually kills aid workers to make it um, impossible for aid workers to want to come to Gaza and help people when they know that the Israeli government will kill them. While a UN-backed assessment says nearly half of the Palestinians in Gaza are facing, quote, catastrophic levels of hunger throughout the territory. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayeb joins us now with Tel Aviv with more on all of this. MTS, what are we learning about the, the death of uh, this Doctors Without Borders staffer in Gaza City? Yeah, hey, Errol. Well, we've heard from Doctors Without Borders. They've identified him. His name is Fadi Al-Wadia. He was killed along with five other people, including three children, as he cycled to work near the MSF clinic uh, that he was working Wow, five adult, well, three kids and two adults, or are they saying seven people total? Uh, five adults and three kids. Either way, uh, how can people continue to claim that the Israeli government is the most moral government or the IDF is the most moral military when they're killing innocent people? They're killing kids. Who can... Uh, the, a, a insane Zionist will claim that, you know, these kids may be Hamas or working as human shields. But that's not justification for killing kids. Looking at in Gaza, now, he was only 33 years old. He was working as a physiotherapist and he is now the sixth staff member for MSF or Doctors Without Borders who have been killed since the October 7th attacks. But when we consider just the sheer number of doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, humanitarians who have been killed across Gaza in the nearly 10 months of brutal war. The number is staggering. And of course, the number of hospitals. Yeah, and when you compare the number of uh, like aid workers and humanitarian workers killed by the Israeli government compared to Hamas. It seems like the Israeli government is committing a whole lot more evils than Hamas. ...which also just no longer exist anymore. It is a perfect storm for uh, what humanitarian workers are calling a humanitarian catastrophe upon catastrophe. Now, as you've been saying, the United Nations and others have basically been saying that if Israel does not do more to protect humanitarian workers, they will have to suspend the limited help that they're giving Palestinian civilians now. And that would be incredibly, incredibly devastating for those innocent civilians. Yeah, and it, it, it's pretty sad that the innocent civilians are the ones who are going to end up being punished with the council going to Gaza because they're going to end up dying from starvation or lack of medical care or something else. But this is what the Israeli government wants. They want to starve as many people as they can if they truly cared about innocent civilians in Gaza getting help. They wouldn't be killing aid workers like they do. Errol, excuse me. And MTS, you've done a, a solid job, as all of our correspondents have, in, uh, in bringing into stark relief the humanitarian crisis that Palestinians in Gaza are facing. The UN now says nearly half a million of them um, face starvation. How dire is the situation now and what's being done to prevent it, considering humanitarian...
if this was happening to Israel, where half a million Israelis were being starved, you know, they, the Israeli government would be acting differently. They would be screaming about how there is a second genocide going on and that the world needs to uh, do everything that they could to prevent it. But when it's happening to Palestinians, uh, the Israeli government and their defenders want to uh, go the way of Nazis and use genocide denialism. Aid organizations face their own challenges. Yeah. Um, you know, it's always hard to use numbers, but I'll give you some because behind every number is a name, is a person, is somebody who's had a whole life. Um, but we are at the numbers. Uh, 34 children have died of malnutrition in Gaza that we know of. Uh, that number is likely far, far higher, but because of the situation in Gaza, it's incredibly difficult to record the deaths of those children who have died from starvation. But we have heard from... And according to the insane Zionists, the lives of Palestinian children mean nothing compared to the lives of Israeli children because they have no issue with Palestinian kids dying, but they want to scream and cry about how many kids uh, Hamas killed. Well, again, look at it. Look how many kids the Israeli government has killed. That has been thousands of times higher than the number of kids Hamas has killed. And there is no justification for that whatsoever. And defending the fact that the Israeli government kills kids makes you worse than Hamas. From the United Nations who say that 50,000 children, uh, in their words, are in urgent need of malnutrition, or rather treatment for acute malnutrition. 50,000 children. And then that, of course, that staggering number of around half a million people who are facing hunger on a very serious level and a very serious scale, I should say. Now, very quickly, Errol, we were on the humanitarian pier that the U.S. constructed, President Biden ordered, cost $230 million. It was supposed to, in the words of the president, flood Gaza with aid, but we've only really seen a trickle of aid get into Gaza. In fact, in the 16 or 17... It was never actually meant to do anything whatsoever. <clears throat> it was just Biden acting like he's doing something to help the Palestinians. Like, it was obvious that th this pier was never going to work, and it turned out to just be a big waste of money. I mean, how is uh, the United States actually supposed to get aid into Gaza using this pier? when the Israeli government is doing everything in their power to stop any aid from coming in. 17 days or so that that pier has been operational, it's been offline for most of it because of repairs and damages that it's needed, only around 400 or so trucks have made it in. And when you consider before the October 7th attacks, 500 aid trucks would get into Gaza every single day. It is barely 